Welcome to the second season of the WDC Distinguished Lecture Series. This season revolves around effective altruism, and the episodes are organized in coordination with the Effective Altruism Debate Championship. Today, our speaker is Joy Savoy. Joy is the founder and strategic director of Charity Entrepreneurship. He works on high-level strategy across all the departments and mentorship and training for the program participants of the incubation programs. He's also one of the primary contributors to the handbook, How to Start a High-Impact Nonprofit. Prior to charity entrepreneurship, Joey co-founded Charity Science, a meta-organization that increased the amount of counterfactual funding going to high-impact charities. Subsequently, he co-founded Charity Science Health, a nonprofit that increases vaccination rates in India using mobile phones and behavioral nudges. He has given lectures on various aspects of charity entrepreneurship and effective altruism in Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, Yale, EAG London, EAG San Francisco, Berlin, Basel, Vancouver, and many others. Joy's talk is titled Introduction to Effective Altruism, and it's the first lecture of our season. We're highly excited to have Joy on board, and for similar content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to talk about effective altruism. Effective altruism is both a movement and a series of concepts and a question, and we're going to talk through what that means. But before we dive into effective altruism, I want to talk about medicine and the medical movement over time. 500 years ago, medicine as a field was very different uh, than it is today. Uh, the scientific revolution hadn't occurred to it uh, yet or hadn't happened to it in a mass scale. Uh, Evidence-based medicine was not a common practice. Uh, there was techniques such as leaching or others which were fairly uh, unproven to help people. And this was a real problem because, of course, uh, with medicine, there are lives on the line. This is a far cry from modern day medicine where randomized control trials, high levels of technological modeling, and other techniques have been used such now that uh, medicine is a highly evidence-based, highly scientific process. Uh, and you've seen, you can see the results. The death rate of children under five has massively decreased. Uh, our medical progress for a wide range of diseases has massively increased. Uh, unfortunately, the charity sector right now is more in the former category than the latter category. Uh, it's still experimenting with different techniques, but it has not gained the robust strength of evidence, the robust way of causing good uh, that is commonly seen in the medical sector. Effective altruism is a little bit aimed towards this question, uh, the question of how do we do the most good using evidence? Uh, now, this seems like a question that has some fairly simple answers, but of course, it gets more complex, as most things do, uh, the more you think about it. So let's break it down into components to, to get into what we're really talking about. Uh, the first question, of course, is uh, what is good? Well, there's a fairly simple answer to this. There are some things that are almost universally agreed as being good. Something simple like saving a life or ridding someone of a disease, generally from most moral systems and most people's perspective, uh, is a positive thing. Uh, however, of course, there's more complexity to this. Uh, what lives to save? Uh, do human and animal lives uh, matter the same? Do animal lives matter at all? Uh, does one life in one country matter more or less than a life in another country? Or do all lives have equal value? Uh, these are much more complex questions with a lot more debate and considerable differences in actions that you might take in the charity sector or other sectors, depending on your perspective on it. What is the most good? Uh, similarly, there's a simple answer to this and a more complex answer to this as well. Uh, the simple answer is that uh, saving two lives or, or curing two diseases is better than one, uh, all things being equal, assuming they're the, the same diseases and, and this sort of thing. Uh, but there's a lot more complex questions. Uh, what about different metrics? Uh, how important is it to increase someone's income, say, versus save someone's life? or rid someone of one disease versus another disease. Uh, making comparisons of which one of these is the most good or which one does the most good per dollar uh, can get a lot more complex. Finally, there's evidence. Uh, again, there's a simple version of this. One randomized control trial compared to two randomized control trials. People will generally prefer things with a higher level of evidence and, and research than the same intervention without it, uh, as is done in the medical sector. Uh, but, of course, evidence can also get more complex. What if there's two well-respected experts who disagree in a field? What if there's one type of indica evidence indicating one intervention is better, uh, but another type of evidence indicating another intervention is better? Uh, it's less clear what to do in these scenarios. So if we swing back to the original question, EA is the question of how to do the most good using evidence, there might be some simple answers. A simple answer might be donate to a giveaway recommended top charity. 
GiveWell does in-depth charity analysis of highly evidence-based charities uh, and comes to extremely impactful results, charities that are incredibly fantastic. And we'll talk more about those. Uh, but the EA movement as a whole is more about digging into these more complex questions. Uh, how do we apply some concepts that the EA movement and, and other movements uh, have come up with to try to get at even stronger options or to try to get a better understanding of how white might we do the most good? Uh, what interventions are evidence-based versus not? How do we compare things across very different fields? Uh, this is the questions that EAs tend to focus on. So in general, the effect of altruism movement is a movement of concepts. And we're going to go over two broad areas of concepts, uh, concepts about donating and the charitable sector, and then concepts about career. Uh, you can think of this as the two inputs that you can use to make the world a better place. You can either put your time or your money or both uh, into making the world a better place. So let's start with donating. Uh, this is probably the place that the effective altruism movement has spent the most time, uh, the most thought and research thinking about it. how do we make our donations more impactful or do more good. Uh, well, there's a few interesting conclusions, a few interesting concepts that have come up in the research. Uh, one is that there's a large difference in impact between some charities. So a default unspoken assumption that most people have is that uh, donating to a charity is good. And what charity you donate to uh, isn't as important as the fact that you donate or not. Uh, but when you look at the evidence in a similar way to how you assess medical evidence, uh, trying to look at the effect sizes and the, the impact of different charitable interventions, uh, the disparities can actually be huge. Uh, even for charities aimed at very similar outcomes. A commonly used example in the effective altruism movement is that there's one charity that can cure blindness uh, for a very low cost, uh, cure a case of cardiacs. And there's another charity that for a much, much higher cost can train a seeing eye dog to aid uh, a, a blind person. Um, these two charities are both aiming at the same metric, uh, helping someone who's sight impaired uh, be able to see better, be able to navigate their world. Uh, and yet, one can be many, many times more cost-effective than the other at accomplishing very similar aims. So uh, this isn't just true for this specific example. It's actually true when you look across all sorts of different charities. You might find one charity that's doing something, doing the same thing for 10 times as cost-effective as another charity, or one charity that ends up running a lot more efficiently and can cover uh, three times as many people uh, for the same resources put into it. Uh, this variable impact between charities uh, is kind of a shocking conclusion and a very important conclusion because if there is these very big differences between different charities, uh, then it really matters what charity to donate to. Uh, donating $10 to one place versus donating $10 to another place might not be equal. Uh, one might be equivalent to donating $1,000 if you just donate $10 and the other one might be equivalent to just $10. Uh, these variable impact in charities is, is a really important concept and one of the stronger concepts that the Effective Altruism Movement has come to in terms of finding a lot of evidence to support this claim that some charities just are massively more effective than others. Now, uh, the astute among you might have thought about a step further out. Okay, you're talking about two charities looking at very similar metrics, maybe two charities uh, curing the same disease. Uh, what about uh, charities that do completely different things? Uh, and this is another very important point that the EA movement thinks about, another concept. Uh, the idea that different cause areas might have very different levels of impact. Uh, we might be impartial. The, the EA movement uh, describes itself as impartial uh, to how we do good. Uh, I don't have a particular preference for a certain disease, whether it's uh, curing someone of malaria or curing someone of cancer. Uh, I mostly care about the good that's done from that. Uh, the EA movement uh, has this impartiality, which leads it to look at a bunch of different cause areas, cause areas that might, similar to the charities, uh, have more impact than other cause areas. Uh, for example, one common conclusion that the effective altruism movement has reached is that uh, your dollar can go a lot further in some countries than it can in others. Uh, I was lucky enough to be born in Canada, and the government covers a lot of basic healthcare services. Uh, but some countries don't have those healthcare services, and they can be fantastically cost effective to implement in those countries. Uh, but uh, if I limited myself to, say, really caring about only people in Canada, uh, I wouldn't be able to cause as much of an impact. So. Impartiality about people uh, is, is a big aspect of this. Uh, there's a concept that's common in EA invented by a philosopher, Peter Singer, uh, called the expanding circle. The idea that over time, people's moral circles, uh, who they care about morally, who they include in their moral circles, uh, has changed over time and, and grown. Uh, maybe a, a long time ago, people's moral circles only included a very small number of individuals, their, their family members or their tribe. Uh, but as we become bigger and bigger, more of a global community, uh, people have included broader and broader groups, you know, eventually communities, nations, and, and eventually the whole world. Uh, extending out even further past that, maybe we start including animals, uh, animals from other species. Uh, maybe we start including people from 
different generations uh, thinking about how our grandchildren would like to inherit the world uh, instead of just our, ourselves at the present time. Uh, these sort of expanding circles uh, allow you to view cause areas in a completely different light, allow you to view cause areas that might be truly neglected or forgotten about by most people, but extremely important. So this is another concept that the EA movement thinks about a lot, uh, what cause areas might be the most impactful. Another is evidence. So we've talked a little bit about evidence before, um, but one a shocking conclusion about the charity sector is that there are charities uh, that don't work uh, or don't work nearly as well as, as they would like to. Uh, there's a lot of fairly famous examples, uh, but one that's often used in the EA movement is this charity called Play Pumps. Uh, Play Pumps was a fairly successful charity. They got lots of endorsements, uh, both from the media and from intelligent people. Uh, and their main kind of goal, their, their mission, what they did, was uh, set up a merry-go-round attached to a water, with the idea being that children could play on this merry-go-round and it would pump up water uh, that otherwise took a lot of manual labor to pump up. Uh, now, it sounds like a pretty good idea. Uh, a lot of people thought this was quite a good idea. Uh, but there were many problems that, that plagued Play Pumps. The merry-go-round wasn't very fun to play on because it was attached to the water system and thus required a lot of force, a lot more force than a typical merry-go-round would require uh, to get it running. So the children didn't play on it, and that resulted in the adults of the town uh, having to push this massively heavy merry-go-round uh, in a much less efficient way than a standard hand pump would have done. Uh, it also turned out that these were very difficult to maintenance, uh, very difficult to fix when they broke down, uh, and just overall not a very good solution. This is a sad case of a charity with great intentions uh, not really causing the good that it wanted to cause. And unfortunately, it happens all the time in the charity sector. Going back to our analogy of evidence-based medicine, before we had rigorous testing protocols for making sure that a medicine worked, uh, a lot of uh, snake oil was sold. A lot of things that didn't work or didn't have the effect that was promised uh, were kind of passed off as successful medicines. Uh, we've progressed a long way in medicine, and of course, it's really important to progress that way. Uh, but the charity sector is still at its infancy. There's some studies being done on charitable interventions, but many, many charities around the world uh, don't have evidence of their impact. Uh, they don't have uh, strong proof for, or proof of the effect. Uh, maybe some of them have anecdotal evidence or a story, but again, that wouldn't be enough to convince us to, to take a dangerous medication or a medication with expenses or side effects uh, without actually running a more advanced study on it. So this is another thing that EA Movement thinks about a lot. Uh, what are the most evidence-based interventions? What sort of evidence should we look for uh, in a charity to be confident that it has an impact? Another concept is the idea of room for more funding. Um, so a uh, common uh, idea is that if you donate to a charity, they're going to put the money towards a very similar thing to what they've done in the past. Uh, but this isn't always the case. Maybe a charity did do some very uh, effective work, some very evidence-based, cost-effective, important work, uh, but the low-hanging fruits are, are taken care of. For example, if a charity is working on vaccinations, often they'll vaccinate the most important population first, uh, and then they'll work on uh, spreading the vaccinations farther. That means that a charity's impact might not even be the same throughout its entire life. Uh, sometimes the low-hanging fruits will get picked, sometimes the charity will get bigger and more cost-effective, better at its job, and able to implement more. So another concept that EAs think about is uh, room for funding. Uh, does the charity have room for funding in that area that we think is particularly impactful? Uh, or has it already kind of picked those low-hanging fruits? Or, or done the most effective things it could with funding. Some charities might be brilliant, but they might only be brilliant at $1 million a year and wouldn't achieve that same level of impact or wouldn't achieve 10 times the level of impact at $10 million a year. Another consideration is the idea of counterfactuals. We'll talk about counterfactuals in a couple different contexts, um, but it's basically the idea of what would have happened otherwise. Uh, for example, we might be speaking to a really fantastic charity, uh, but you might know that if you don't give it funding, it will get funding from the Gates Foundation anyways. Uh, that means that you funding it has a very different impact than if you knew it wouldn't get funding. Uh, it's the difference between the Gates Foundation funding that versus whatever else it would have funded. Uh, thinking about counterfactuals or what would have happened otherwise is a very uh, unique thing to the effective vultures movement. It's not commonly thought about in the charity sector, uh, but it can really change the impact of an organization, thinking about where otherwise it would be spending its time or resources. A final really important concept when it comes to donating is the power that an individual can have. A lot of people have this perception that uh, the top 1% of the world uh, has all the wealth and all the power and, and really makes uh, all the difference when it comes to things. Uh, but people often neglect uh, thinking about how uh, powerful you really are. Uh, if you're watching this presentation, uh, odds are you're in the top 10% of wealth in the world. Uh, you're probably incredibly well off, and that gives you an unparalleled amount of uh, ability to help others, ability to cause a difference in the world, uh, make a significant donation or, or put in time uh, in a way that will be challenging. 
in many ways, we have resources more than a king of a thousand years ago or a couple thousand years ago uh, would have had. Uh, access to entertainment at the touch of a button. We have all these amazing resources and, and all this amazing uh, wealth. And it really gives us a unique opportunity to be able to better others at, in significant ways. One analogy uh, that is commonly used in the EA movement is the idea of the drowning child. So again, Peter Singer, who I mentioned earlier, came up with this concept of, say you were on your way walking to work. And as you were walking there, you saw a toddler uh, drowning in a, in a shallow pond uh, beside you. Uh, you saw them struggling for air and, and there was no one else around to help. Uh, now you could help, you could wade in quite easily to this pond, there, there'd be no risk to your life, uh, but it would mess up your, your suit and you are on your way to, to a job or say even a job interview and wearing your finest clothing uh, worth several hundred dollars. Uh, most people don't see this as a moral choice at all. They see it as quite obvious that you should go in and help the child. Uh, but the, the catch of this dilemma is that there actually are ways right now that we can make significant differences to people's lives. Uh, there might not be a child drowning right in front of us, but there are children around the world who are getting serious diseases and, and dying uh, with stuff that's fairly easily prevented with uh, donations that most people could make. Uh, so this concept of uh, that we have incredible power to be able to help others uh, is also uh, an exciting concept in the effective altruism movement, a concept that we think about a lot and talk about a lot. So overall, the question of how much good can a donation do? Uh, it's a bit of an open question exactly how much it can do. There's still exploration in terms of what's the most effective charity, what's the most effective cause, and still debates ongoing. Uh, but one thing that seems to have a, a consensus is that uh, you really can do a lot. Most people can have a much bigger impact than they would estimate from helping others or from making a donation. Uh, and that leaves a lot of opportunity and a lot of excitement towards working on these problems and, and supporting these problems. Now, of course, money isn't the only thing that you can give to, to better the world or, or give to, to make an altruistic difference in the world. Uh, there's also time, uh, whether that's volunteering or, or through careers. When most people think about an altruistic career, the, the, first line that come, the first career that comes to mind is working at an NGO. Uh, and this can be a very high impact career, but there's often factors that people don't think about that can change the impact of it. Uh, one is counterfactuals. Again, uh, what would have happened otherwise? So you might think that getting a job at an NGO is particularly high impact, but you have to think about what would have happened if you didn't apply for that job? Would the NGO have just had an empty position? No one would have filled it? Or would they have hired the second best person? Uh, that can really change the impact estimate of how impactful it is to, to work for an NGO, uh, especially if the second best person is also very good. Say it's a very popular or competitive job. Uh, your counterfactual impact is the difference between you and what would have happened otherwise, the person they would have hired otherwise. Uh, that means we have to think a little bit differently when we're thinking about career paths and, and how to make a difference with our hours. We don't just need to think about what our hours do, but uh, how the world would adjust uh, to our hours. You know, If we put more hours into a given topic, does that mean someone else would move and work on a different topic or move to a different job? So I want to talk about a couple of careers that the EA movement has identified as potentially very promising, potentially very impactful, and maybe a little bit less thought of uh, than the kind of traditional career paths that people might go into when they think about altruism. One is the idea of earning to give. Uh, earning to give is basically getting a high income job, uh, it could be as a programmer in finance or something like this, uh, and basically donating money instead of your time to an organization. Uh, now, this is a little bit different than traditionally donating, which people would just work whatever job they would like to and, uh, and donate some percentage of their income. Earning to give is explicitly about trying to take a higher earning job so that you can donate more. Uh, it's a very interesting idea that maybe the best way to help a charity would actually not be by working for it, but by getting a high income job and, and donating to it. Uh, there's many people in the EA movement who do this, who have earning to give jobs where they're making significant salaries and donating very significant percentages, often as much as 50% of their salary uh, to charities. And every charity and cause area has a different perspective on what's more missing. Uh, you know, does a certain area need more time? Does a certain area need more money? Uh, but earning to give can be a very interesting and impactful way of making a difference in the world. Uh, it's a concept that has been talked a lot about in the EA movement, but wasn't considered a lot before that. Charity entrepreneurship is another interesting concept. Uh, just like traditional entrepreneurship, uh, charity entrepreneurship can kind of create something out of nothing, can, can create a charity in an area where otherwise maybe there's not a lot of time or attention or impact going to it. 
going back to working for an NGO, the counterfactuals of charity entrepreneurship, what would have happened otherwise, can often be very beneficial. Uh, if you're founding a charity in an effective way in a new area that otherwise wouldn't have had a charity, uh, you can draw and gather support there, uh, as opposed to competing with the top people who are working for an NGO. And charity entrepreneurship can be a really impactful way of kind of moving a lot of resources towards an impactful cause area, especially for starting charities that are amongst the highest impact. Uh, starting a random charity or a less than average impact charity could actually be a negative uh, for the world, could actually be a bad thing. Um, but charity entrepreneurship isn't really a career path, nor is earning to give, that's on most people's radar when they think about doing good. Another very promising area that often isn't at the top of people's minds is doing high impact research. Uh, high impact research can be the cause of many positive changes in the world. Uh, many of the greatest medical discoveries uh, were done because of someone being kind of uh, tirelessly researching in the back lab, uh, trying to get an answer to a tough question. Uh, research can also be done from a charitable perspective and from an altruism perspective. Uh, for example, maybe there's an area that's very promising, maybe an area that people will see as a moral atrocity 100 years from now, and yet nobody has really noticed it or nobody has thought about it deeply. Uh, this sort of research can be really impactful. One concept in the EA movement is the idea of a, a cause X, or an area that we would really see as a, a moral atrocity 100 years from now. Uh, we can look back a couple hundred years ago and see all sorts of things that we thought were, were wrong or that society wasn't paying enough attention to. Uh, so surely there are things now that maybe are neglected or underpaid attention to that would be incredibly important or that future humans will see as incredibly important uh, compared to how people view it today. Another career path that is closer to the top of mind for people is working for foundations or policy, uh, basically spreading ideas beyond the individual. Uh, something like earning to give, you can have a significant impact by donating a portion of your income. Uh, but working with a foundation or a policymaker can, of course, uh, redirect millions of dollars or, or significant resources towards key problems, especially coming in with some of these concepts that are less commonly used, the idea that some charities are much more effective than others, that some areas might be much more effective than others. Uh, this can be helpful knowledge to foundations or policymakers to make sure they're getting the most good done or the most... Uh, progress created uh, with the resources that they're deploying. And because their resources are significant, uh, impacting these in more positive directions can be a significantly impactful career path. So how much good can a lifetime do? Well, there's entire organizations ded dedicated to this. Uh, 80,000 hours states that you have 80,000 hours in your career and tries to give career advice about how to make your career the most impactful. Uh, animal career advocacy uh, focuses on giving career advice to people who are interested in helping animals with their life. What gaps are in that movement? What are the most impactful things to do? Uh, it's kind of an open question as to what the most exciting thing uh, to do or what the most impactful thing for any given individual would be. Uh, but there certainly are options that are very promising and, and not ways that people are thinking. Some of this talk may have given the impression that the EA movement has it all figured out, uh, but really most of the questions are still open. There's a lot of questions about what to do, what's the most impactful thing, what should we continue to explore, and the answers to these questions might be uh, ever moving. They might change as the world changes. Maybe one area will be particularly impactful to work on for the next five years, uh, but then a different area will be more impactful to work on after that. Uh, some of these open questions, where there's still a lot of debate internally to the effective altruism movement, is uh, one is what's the most important cause to work on? Uh, some EAs think it's global poverty, focusing on those who are uh, in extreme poverty or, or in extreme uh, difficulty health circumstance wise uh, and have been neglected from the, the global aid community for the most part. Uh, this can be a massively impactful thing with charities uh, saving lives for thousands of dollars, much like the drowning child argument that we used. And the evidence base in this area is uh, fantastic. So it can be a really promising cause area, but what if you care about animals? Uh, the evidence base is a little less established, but maybe you can help even more animals, thousands of times more. Uh, there's many EAs concerned with the idea of existential risk, uh, risks that could end humanity's potential in the long term. Uh, maybe that's a highly important cause area, or maybe it's not even one of the top cause areas that the EA movement is talking about, or an area that the EA movement has talked about a little bit, but not explored that deeply. Uh, mental health, for example, is a relatively new area uh, in the world to be focusing on in a charitable way, and it's also relatively new to the EA space in terms of this could be a very impactful way of looking at the world and, and finding key issues that could cause a lot of good. What's the right number of people for each career path? 
Uh, maybe some of these career paths I talked about are massively impactful, but it probably doesn't make sense to have a thousand people starting new charities every year. Uh, that's only uh, a few select people who'd be a really good fit that would be the best for charity entrepreneurship. Uh, maybe foundation jobs are great, but only some foundation jobs are extremely impactful uh, relative to others. Uh, given the world as it is and, and the EA movement as it is, uh, how many people should go down each of these career paths? Should most people be earning to give and donating with a few people working directly for charities? Or should a huge percentage of, of EAs or people interested in impact uh, go into policy? Because that's the most effective lever. Uh, this is still an open question and still something people talk about, debate, and think about and more research is needed on. Another question is, what's the best heuristics for impact? Uh, heuristic is a mental shortcut, uh, a way to get at something. Uh, ideally, of course, we'd love to go through and research every possible cause area and every possible career and, and every possible way to do good. Uh, but in practice, uh, it's a big world uh, with infinite complexity and you, you really can dive into these details forever. So how do we narrow down the range? What might be an indicative sign that a certain charity or a certain cause is particularly promising? worth looking at further? Uh, that's still an open question. You'll hear probably about the INT framework, which is a framework with a few heuristics aimed at narrowing down what might be the most promising cause areas. Uh, but there's hundreds of ways that you could possibly narrow down cause areas. And that's, it's an area that requires a lot more thought from the EA movement and, and others in the world. So this brings us back to the first question. Uh, what is the EA movement? Well, it's basically a young movement full of people who are trying to figure out answers to these complex questions trying to figure out how can we actually do the most good or have the greatest impact with our money or time. Um, it's a movement that really cares about making progress on this question, even if it's difficult, even if it requires research, uh, and tries to look for the complex answers as well as the simple ones. Uh, ultimately, these questions are so important that it's worth having an entire movement dedicated to trying to answer them. Uh, how can we do the most good? Uh, 